I'm Brianna, and this is a quick update on the inertial electrostatic confinement fuser that I've been working on for the past couple of months. At a high level, an inertial electrostatic fuser works by making deuterons, or deuterium ions, accelerate super quickly, where they eventually collide head-on and have a certain probability of fusing. Now, what causes them to accelerate is the force that's exerted by an electric field within the chamber. And so this electric field is between the main exterior of the chamber, which is connected to ground, so it's positively charged, and the inner grid. The inner grid is negatively charged, and it's this sphere of tungsten wires that's connected to a negative 30,000 volt power supply. So when deuterium ions are inside the chamber, they're positively charged because they're ions, they accelerate towards the negatively charged inner grid inside the chamber, and at that grid, they have a certain probability of colliding head-on and fusing if they overcome the Coulomb barrier. Now, for this type of fuser, deuterium ions would overcome the Coulomb barrier through quantum tunneling. And once they do, there are two things that can happen with equal probability. The first one being that the deuterium-deuterium fusion creates helium-3 and a neutron, or it creates tritium and a proton. The fuser is made up of four different components, the vacuum system, the high voltage system, a neutron detection system, and a deuterium system. For this video, I'm going to talk about my progress on the first two. Let's start with the vacuum system. I started off building the four line, and in vacuum world, this is a vacuum line between two different pumps. On the end of the four line, I have a JB Industries DV142N mechanical pump. This pump ushers air out of the four line, diffusion pump body, and main chamber to get a good vacuum pressure in the chamber, which is crucial for fusion. Connected to the pump are a couple of fittings, a 6 inch a hose, and some KF to NPT adapters. When connecting all these four line parts, I've learned that it's crucial to incrementally add parts and keep measuring your four line pressure. Otherwise, you'll be introducing a lot of potential sources of vacuum leaks, and you'll have to debug your issue by isolating the problem. Using a T, some O-rings and clamps, I've connected a CPS VG200 micron gauge to measure the four-line pressure, and I currently have a vacuum pressure of 53 microns on my four-line gauge, which means that there's likely some vacuum leaks, probably from the fittings, and this is a problem that I'm working on fixing right now. Connected to the four-line is an Edwards Diffstack diffusion pump. A diffusion pump uses hot oil vapor to capture remaining air molecules inside the chamber, the air molecules are then ushered out of the system from the mechanical pump's exhaust. Its main purpose is to allow us to get an even deeper vacuum inside the main chamber. Attached to the diffusion pump is the main chamber. I'm using a stainless steel MDC 6 inch cross. She's a beauty, right? I've attached a high voltage feed through on the left, a viewport on the front, a switch lock to conflat flange adapter to input deuterium on the right, and a micron gauge to measure the pressure of the main chamber on the top. Each conflat flange was attached using a copper gasket, some bolts, and nuts, and applied silver anti-seize to each bolt thread before attaching parts together. After making sure the conflat flanges were all aligned, I then tightened each bolt in a star pattern using a torque wrench so I could get a consistent torque. I thought the vacuum world was fascinating, but high voltages are even cooler, albeit deadly. <laughs> I have a Glassman high voltage power supply capable of negative 30,000 volts and 100 milliamps. Here you can see a bunch of connections on different pins to program the power supply. It's programmed with a 0 to 24 volt DC transformer where 10 volts input gives me negative 30,000 volts output. I'm still testing this supply to make sure I can get the proper current and voltage I need, but in the near future I'm going to connect it to a high voltage feed through and some ballast resistors. The high voltage feed through quite literally feeds high voltage to the inner grid, which is where fusion will occur. As I mentioned earlier, positively charged deuterium ions will be attracted to the negatively charged grid and will accelerate towards the grid where some of them will collide and fuse. My inner grid is made of two tungsten wire loops that are secured to a copper tube, which is then insulated with another ceramic alumina tube. And this all sits on top of the stock of the high voltage feed through inside the chamber. The main thing that I've learned from this project is the importance of being able to predict everything that can go wrong. And trust me, there are a bunch of things that can go wrong. In fact, every day I'm asking myself what areas are currently ambiguous and how do I reduce the ambiguity of those areas? 
Also, what future problems can arise from the ambiguous areas? And how do I prevent those problems from occurring in the first place? I really think engineering is this big optimization problem between time, cost, current knowledge, and current resources. And I want to be able to find the global optima and also create new ones in the future. See you on the next update.